Hey Broncos fans, Sam Brown here with the Broncos Breakdown. Hope you guys are staying warm on this Tuesday. And we've got some rumors to jump into onto today's show. Some off-season rumors, some quarterback rumors, and even a couple draft nuggets for you guys because there's a player here that we haven't really talked about much, and so I wanted to get the chance to run it by you guys as per usual. We're going to start with a tidbit, tidbit that I caught this morning on Carson Wentz. This is a rumor that's been going on for a little bit now, but it was quickly shut down, which uh, we'll dive into a little bit more. Adam Kaplan of InsideTheBirds.com reported last week that the Denver Broncos might be a team to monitor when it came to trading for Carson Wentz. However, today, and we'll show you the tweet here in a little bit, Troy Rank of Denver 7 said the Broncos are out on a Wentz trade, and we'll talk a bit more about who they might be in on here in just a second. The Bears and the Colts appear to be the main suitors for Carson Wentz. But obviously, it looks like he won't be going to Denver. According to Troy Rank here, anchor at Denver 7, this was yesterday afternoon, tweeted, quote, hashtag Broncos QB situation will dominate offseason discussion. They will pursue Watson if the Texans decide to trade him. They are not in on Wentz, not in. Luck has handled the noise well, working out, focused on having a great offseason. He understands he has to get better to keep and win the job. We'll talk about Locke in a little bit here in a little bit. But in terms of Carson Wentz, I mean, Talk about a weight off your shoulders. Good thing the Broncos do not want Carson Wentz. If you agree with me, hit the thumbs up on this video. I did not want, this is not the quarterback that we wanted the, the Broncos to trade for because let's face it, if you didn't like Drew Locke and you think the Broncos should be moving on from Drew Locke, it's not like Carson Wentz is that much better of an option. As a matter of fact, their numbers were seemingly eerily similar this past season. The completion per percentage Went slightly better, more yards for Locke in one more start. The same amount of touchdowns, the same amount of interceptions. Locke had eight fumbles, Wentz had 10, and a slightly better QBR for Carson Wentz. These two quarterbacks, I mean, like I said, you're not getting much of a step up here with Carson Wentz. And so I'm very, very glad that Denver's going to stay away from Wentz. He looked absolutely broken last year. A shell of himself, a shell of the quarterback that we talked about as a top 10 guy after the 2017 season. And like I said, it's a good thing the Broncos aren't, out, aren't in on Wentz and are exploring their options elsewhere. Namely, a guy that you've heard of and a guy that we've talked about several times here, Deshaun Watson. Now, over the weekend, you may have caught this, but just to kind of connect this and tie it to Wentz, Deshaun Watson's short list of teams he's potentially interested in. The Denver Broncos are on that list, according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. We'll pull up the full quote here just so you can kind of see. He said on Get Up on Sunday, I checked in with a source that says Deshaun Watson has a list of teams that he's intrigued by. He's not pigeonholing anything, but he's got a list. I didn't get all the teams, but I was told that the Denver Broncos, the San Francisco 49ers, are two of them. And that's also partially a reason why the Broncos are out on Wentz is because they're kind of locked in on Watson. If Drew Locke isn't going to be their guy, I think they're going to try and make a move for Deshaun Watson. That'll be something to monitor over the weeks to come because, you know, it doesn't seem that the Texans are willing to trade Watson anytime soon. But this is interesting progress for the Denver Broncos as the offseason develops. I've said before, George Payton's got a decision to make here very soon on where he wants to go with the quarterback spot. But thank God it's not going to be in the Carson Wentz position. Now, in regards to Carson, uh, Deshaun Watson, excuse me, what's the better fit for him as a team? Because the 49ers were that other team that Fowler reported as a team he would be interested in. So you can type SF for the 49ers, type DEN for the Broncos. I have a feeling I'm going to see a bunch of you Broncos fans in the comments typing DEN. As far as a better fit goes, short term, I might actually say San Francisco just because they're more built to win now. But you want to talk about a long-term fit with all the young pieces that Denver has, I think it could make some sense. But pin comment down below, first comment up below this video, let me know San Francisco or Denver. Another player to talk about here as we move to our next story, will the Denver Broncos tag Justin Simmons again? Obviously, he played under the franchise tag last season for the Broncos, and various media sources believe Denver will franchise tag Simmons again for the second straight season. Now, if that happens, Simmons would get paid about $13.5 million, maybe a little bit more, give or, uh, give or take uh, a couple thousand dollars there. But uh, he uh, has until July 15th, 
to reach an extension or reach an agreement with the Broncos on an extension. And keep in mind, George Payton does also need to make a decision on Kareem Jap Jackson, who has over $13 million on his club option for next season as well. Now, here's the quote from a, a writer for the Denver Post, Ryan O'Halloran, on, Sto on Stokely and Zach saying, quote, I think the easiest thing on Justin Simmons is going to be to extend that tag for a second straight year. That doesn't mean he's going to play on it. At least put him under your control to try and work out a long-term deal. We'll show you some photos here in a second, too, from another reporter, Benjamin Albright. But I want to talk about a couple reasons why I think the Broncos should consider signing Justin Simmons long-term. Obviously, the tag is an option. But the first reason, Simmons was already tagged once. That's a reason that we'll talk, into, uh, talk about more in a little bit. But in terms of long-term approach, if you want to keep Simmons in the orange and blue, tagging him twice and paying him less than what he'll want on a yearly, on a yearly salary is not the way to do it. We've seen you know, players and teams in the past come to disagreements and, and that franchise tag really kind of causing a divide between the two sides. I don't want that sort of, of PR cloud, we should say, over Justin Simmons during his franchise tag season. Number two, and it's a fairly simple one, he's entering his prime. He's 27 years old, doesn't turn 28 until November. He's already potentially a top five safety, made his first Pro Bowl in 2020, which I get that it's an arbitrary, uh, arbitrary award, but nonetheless, it shows kind of his stature and where he is relative to other safeties in the league. And reason number three, I think, is a huge one as well. He's giving back to Denver. We all know, you guys all know, the type of character that Justin Simmons is. The Broncos, Walter Payton, Man of the Year nominee for the last two seasons. Obviously, we know that about the Justin Simmons Foundation, all the great things he's done in the community to, uh, to provide support for youth development, hunger relief, things like that. His work in the social justice movement as well. This is a high character man and a guy that you want representing the Denver Broncos. So we'll show uh, Benjamin Albright, obviously a reporter for uh, KOA, the uh, Denver Broncos flagship, flagship radio station, saying that this was, a, this was kind of a message that he had gotten about the Broncos and Justin Simmons, saying that he've heard, he's heard that they are looking at a second tag in negotiations um, as a negotiating mechanism. And essentially what that means is that, yes, other teams wouldn't be able to reach out to Simmons, and I mentioned that July 15th key date, but that also just means that Justin Simmons gets locked in long-term in Denver. And so whether they franchise tag him, whether they don't, whether they try to sign a long-term issue or a long-term long -term deal, Justin Simmons is priority number one for the Broncos this offseason, bringing him in, being willing to pay top five safety money, which I've said time and time again they should do. He'll likely be the highest paid safety in the NFL, but it'll be well worth the price. I'll give you another chance now here to hit that thumbs up for me. If you want Denver to sign Justin Simmons long term, smash that like below this video. You know, we're getting a couple thousand at least uh, views per video. There's no way there aren't at least 200 of you out there who think that Denver, the Denver should re-sign Justin Simmons. So do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. The bus want to see how you feel about this. I'm going to come back at this video and look and see how you guys spoke on this. So be sure to hit that thumbs up if you want Justin Simmons in Denver. And we're going to be doing more videos covering Justin Simmons all offseason long, as well as the rest of the Denver Broncos plans, whether it's draft, like we'll talk about here in a second, free agency, everything orange and blue. You're not going to want to miss it. So hit that big red button below this video, or you see this link right below me. It's youtube.com slash Broncos TV. Send that to some of the biggest Broncos fans you know. Let's continue to go to the channel here on the Broncos Breakdown. All right, some draft news a little bit uh, to, to wrap up the show. How about Quiddy Pay, a guy that we haven't talked about much here on the Broncos Breakdown. PFF's Austin Gale, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, has the Broncos taking the Michigan edge in the first round. A very athletic player uh, at Michigan, but his production hasn't really matched his tools, and we'll talk about his numbers in a sec. Plus, it's not the biggest need for Denver at number nine, so... Didn't really love this pick from Austin Gale. Quiddy Pay in 28 games at Michigan, 97 tackles, 24 tackles for loss, just under 12 sacks. Like I said, had a breakout season last season in 2019 with six and a half sacks, but that's half his sack production across his entire time at Michigan. Only had two sacks last season in four games, and like I said, the athleticism didn't really match the production. He's going to test really well. He's going to wow some people. He's going to be one of those winners of the combine or winners of pro day, even though they aren't, aren't have a really aren't really having a combine, but Pay is a guy that I think will rise up some boards, but I'm not sure he's the right fit for Denver at number nine. Now, on Caleb Farley, on the other hand, that's a different question. Jer Daniel Jeremiah put out his mock draft today on Tuesday. He's got the Broncos drafting Farley at number nine, the cornerback out of Virginia Tech. 
I, I mean, you see it on the second line. This is a much better fit, I think, than drafting pay. It's better value at number nine. It's a better fit in terms of the Broncos' needs and their holes. And Caleb Farley's got all the tools, and he's got the production to match it. He opted out of the 2020 season, but he showed enough in 2019 and across his time at Virginia Tech to really lock himself as a top 10, top 12 prospect. I think if, if Farley or Sertan, a guy that we've talked about on this show, is at number nine as well, I think the Broncos should jump right in. I'm not sure that Pay is really the guy they want there at number nine. He's going to be rising up some boards as more testing numbers come in and stuff like that, and Pay has a chance to wow you. But I think Farley or Sertan, someone that's mo more well-proven as a prospect, might be a better look. So nice try, PFF. Good job, Daniel Jeremiah. I'll end it on this question right here. Pick one to draft a number nine overall. You heard why I think about it. I would type my CF for Caleb Farley, but maybe you think it's Quiddy Pay. Go ahead and type KP down below. Remember, hit that thumbs up button if you think that Denver Broncos should re-sign Justin Simmons, and be sure to subscribe. We'll see you next time.